no one told you women are looking at this. Leave a like on the video my love and if you are new to the channel subscribe to receive new advice, do this to help the channel continue to grow, leaving a like is all I ask as a gift. Hey there, it's Pamela Raquel. Think you know what women are looking for in a potential partner? Well, think again. There are countless subtle cues and behaviors that women are secretly paying attention to when sizing you up, and chances are you are not even aware of them. In this video, we will dive into the hidden factors that can make or break your attractiveness. Before we unpack today's topic, feel like your dating life could use some expert advice? Reserve a free strategy call with one of our coaches by clicking the link in the description or pinned comment. Now, let's dive in. How you deal with strangers. First up, let's talk about your interactions with strangers. You might think that women are only paying attention to how you treat them, but the truth is they are also watching how you interact with the world at large. Do you approach strangers with warmth and openness, or do you keep your head down and avoid eye contact? Women are drawn to men who exude a sense of approachability and ease in social situations. They want to see that you are comfortable striking up a conversation with anyone, from the barista at your local coffee shop to the elderly lady next to you on the bus. But it's not just about being outgoing, it's also about being respectful and considerate. Women are wanting to see if you are the type of guy who holds the door open for others, who offers his seat to someone in need, and who treats everyone with kindness and dignity. So the next time you are out and about, remember that your interactions with strangers are sending a powerful message about your character. Be the guy who lights up a room with his presence, who makes everyone feel seen and valued, and who spreads positivity wherever he goes. Trust me, women will take notice. Condition of your hands. Alright, guys, let's talk about an often overlooked aspect of your appearance that women are definitely noticing, your hands. Now, I know what you might be thinking, my hands, really? But hear me out. Your hands are one of the first things a woman will notice when you meet, whether you are shaking hands or handing her a drink. And the state of your hands can say a lot about your overall hygiene and attention to detail. Women are looking for hands that are clean, well manicured, and free of dirt and grime. They want to see that you take pride in your appearance and that you are not afraid to put in a little effort to look your best. But it's not just about the aesthetics, it's about the implications. A man with rough, calloused hands might come across as hardworking and masculine, whereas a man with soft, well moisturized hands might seem more sophisticated and refined. Of course, this doesn't mean you need to spend hours at the nail salon or slather your hands in lotion every day, but taking a few minutes to trim your nails, wash your hands regularly, and apply a little moisturizer can go a long way in making a positive impression. So the next time you are getting ready for a big date or an important meeting, don't forget to give your hands a little TLC. Quality of your shoes. Now let's move on to another surprising factor that women are paying attention to, your shoes. That's right, guys, your footwear is not just a practical necessity, it's also a key indicator of your style, your personality, and your attention to detail. Women are looking for shoes that are clean, well-maintained, and appropriate for the occasion. They want to see that you put thought into your appearance from head to toe and that you are not the kind of guy who just throws on any old pair of sneakers and calls it a day. But it's not just about the cleanliness, it's also about the style. A man who wears stylish, high-quality shoes is sending a message that he values himself and takes pride in his appearance. He's showing that he's willing to invest in the things that matter and that he has a keen eye for fashion and trends. Of course, this doesn't mean you need to break the bank on designer footwear or wear dress shoes wherever you go, but taking the time to choose shoes that are comfortable, well-made, and appropriate for the occasion can make a big difference in how women perceive you. So the next time you are shoe shopping, don't just grab the first pair that fits. Take a moment to consider what your footwear says about you and choose shoes that reflect the best version of yourself. How you walk. Alright, let's talk about something that might seem small but can actually have a big impact on how women perceive you, the way you walk. That's right, your gait and posture can speak volumes about your confidence, your energy, and your overall presence. Women are drawn to men who walk with purpose and self-assurance. They want to see that you are comfortable in your own skin, that you know where you are going, and that you are not afraid to take up space in the world. But it's not just about the swagger, it's also about the body language. A man who walks with his head held high, his shoulders back, and his chest out is sending a message that he's confident, powerful, and ready to take on the world. On the other hand, a man who shuffles his feet, hunches his shoulders, and avoids eye contact is sending a very different message. Of course, 
This doesn't mean you need to strut around like a peacock or puff out your chest like a bodybuilder, but taking a moment to check your posture, to walk with intention, and to project a sense of ease and self-assurance can make a big difference in how women perceive you. So the next time you are out and about, pay attention to your walk. Are you slouching or striding? Are you meandering or moving with purpose? Remember, the way you move throughout the world says a lot about who you are, and women are definitely taking notice. Your relationship with your phone. In a world where we are constantly connected, it's easy to fall into the trap of being glued to our screens 24-7. But when it comes to attracting women, your phone habits can be a major turnoff. Women are looking for men who are present, engaged, and focused on the moment. They want to see that you are capable of putting down your phone and giving your full attention to the person in front of you. But it's not just about being polite, it's also about being confident. A man who is constantly checking his phone or scrolling through social media is sending a message that he's bored, distracted, or not fully invested in the interaction. On the other hand, a man who is able to put his phone away and be fully present is showing that he's confident, self-assured, and genuinely interested in the conversation. Of course, this doesn't mean you need to swear off technology altogether, but being mindful of your phone habits, especially when you are in the company of others, can make a big difference in how women perceive you. So the next time you are on a date or out with your friends, try putting your phone away and focusing on the people around you. Show that you are fully present, fully engaged, and fully invested in the moment. How you treat others. Alright, guys, let's talk about one of the most important factors that women are paying attention to when they are sizing you up, how you treat others. This might seem like a no-brainer, but you'd be surprised how many men overlook the importance of basic kindness and respect in their interactions with the world. Women are watching to see how you treat everyone, from your closest friends to complete strangers. They want to see that you are the kind of guy who is considerate, empathetic, and respectful to all, regardless of their status or position. This means being polite to wait staff, being patient with customer service representatives, and being kind to those who can't do anything for you in return. It means being a good listener, being quick to offer help or support, and being slow to judge or criticize. But it's not just about being a nice guy. It's also about being a leader. Women are drawn to men who set a positive example for others, who stand up for what's right, and who aren't afraid to speak out against injustice or cruelty. So the next time you are interacting with someone, whether it's a close friend or a complete stranger, remember that your behavior is sending a powerful message about your character. Be the kind of man who treats others with respect, kindness, and compassion, and watches women take notice and admire you for it. If you've made it this far, my love, Comment below with the word 100% or something else to let me know, to confirm that you've received the knowledge from the video so far. For more interesting topics, subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video and share it later. Let's continue. If a woman says this avoid her. Hey there, it's Pamela Raquel. Today, we're diving into the wild world of dating red flags. You know, those subtle or not so subtle signs that make you go, whoa, hold up. Now, we've all been there, right? Well, buckle up because we're about to explore 6 common red flags that might just save you from a dating disaster. Whether you are new to the dating scene or a seasoned veteran, these tips will help you navigate the sometimes treacherous waters of relationships. Before we jump into today's topic, take a moment to think about your love life. Want some expert help? Check out our free 60-minute strategy call. You'll find the link in the description or pinned comment. Now, let's dive in. All my exes are crazy. First up, we have the classic, all my exes are crazy, line. Now, I know what you're thinking, but maybe she just has bad luck. Well, my friends, let me ask you this, if everywhere you go smells like dog poop, maybe it's time to check your own shoes, right? Same principle applies here. If she's constantly playing the victim and blaming her exes for everything, chances are she's not taking accountability for her own actions. It's like that old saying goes, if you run into a jerk in the morning, you ran into a jerk. If you run into jerks all day, you are the jerk. So, if she's got a trail of crazy exes, it might be time to take a step back and ask yourself if you want to be the next one on that list. Remember, a healthy relationship is built on mutual respect and personal responsibility. If she can't own up to her part in past relationships, that's a major red flag. I hate drama, but it always seems to find me. Next up, we've got the drama magnet. You know, the girl who always seems to find herself in the middle of some kind of chaos but swears she hates it. 
Yeah, that one. Here's the thing, if drama always seems to find her, it might be because she's the one bringing it to the party. It's like that friend who always complains about getting pulled over for speeding but never seems to learn to slow down. If she's constantly surrounded by drama, there's a good chance she's playing a starring role in it. Now, don't get me wrong, life can be messy sometimes, but if every day feels like an episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, might be time to change the channel. Unless you are looking to audition for a soap opera, you might want to think twice before casting her as your leading lady. You're going to pay for that. Right, okay, let's talk about the, you are paying, right, girl. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with a little chivalry, but if she's insisting on you footing the bill from day one, that could be a red flag. It's one thing to treat your lady to a nice dinner or a thoughtful gift, but if she's expecting you to bankroll her lifestyle from the get-go, that's a whole other story. If she's more interested in your wallet than your personality, it might be time to reevaluate the relationship. I'm not saying you should be keeping score or anything, but a healthy relationship is about give and take. If she's all take and no give, that's a problem. After all, you're looking for a partner, not a sugar baby. So, if she's constantly expecting you to pay her way, it might be time to have a serious talk about financial expectations in the relationship. I can be a bit of a handful sometimes. Fourth on our list is the self-proclaimed handful. You know, the girl who warned you up front that she can be a bit much. Now, a little bit of spice in a relationship can be a good thing, but if she's already throwing out red flags like confetti, pay attention. It's like when you see a sign that says, caution wet floor, you don't go running across it like a kid at a water park, right? Same thing applies here. If she's telling you she is a handful, believe her, and ask yourself if you are ready to juggle that kind of baggage. Now, don't get me wrong, everyone's perfect, we all have our quirks and challenges, but there's a difference between being a little high maintenance and being a full-on diva. If she's constantly testing your patience or expecting you to cater to her every whim, that's not a good sign. Remember, relationships should be about bringing out the best in each other and not constantly putting out fires. So, if she's warning you that she's a handful, take a moment to consider whether you are ready for that kind of challenge. Why do you need to go out with your friends when you have me? Next, we've got the clingy girlfriend who can't stand the thought of you having a life outside of her. Look, it's great to want to spend time with your significant other, but if she's questioning your every move and trying to monopolize your time, that's a problem. If she's expecting you to be there for her 24-7, that's not love, that's a hostage situation. A healthy relationship is built on trust, respect, and independence. If she can't handle you having your own friends and hobbies, it might be time to find someone who can. Now, I get it, being in a relationship means making compromises and prioritizing each other's needs, but there's a difference between being considerate and being codependent. If she's constantly guilting you for spending time with your buddies or pursuing your own interests, that's a red flag. Remember, a strong relationship is one where both partners support each other's growth and happiness, both together and apart. So, if she's making you feel like you have to choose between her and the rest of your life, it might be time to reevaluate things. I need you to change this about yourself. Last but not least, we have the girl who wants to change everything about you. Maybe it's your haircut, your fashion sense, or even your personality. Whatever it is, if she's constantly trying to mold you into her idea of a perfect boyfriend, that's a big old red flag. It's one thing to encourage personal growth and support each other's goals, but it's another thing entirely to try and fundamentally change who someone is. If she can't accept you for who you are, flaws and all, then she's not the one for you. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't be open to self-improvement, we all have room to grow and learn. But there's a difference between a partner who supports your growth and one who tries to control it. If she's constantly criticizing your every move or trying to fix you, that's not love, that's manipulation. Remember, gentlemen, you are not a fixer-upper project, you are a catch just the way you are. So, if she's not willing to accept and appreciate the real you, it might be time to find someone who is. If you've made it this far, my love, comment below with the word, 100%, or something else to let me know, to confirm that you've received the knowledge from the video so far. For more interesting topics, subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video and share it later. Let's continue. Ignoring women to build attraction, the real meaning, psychology behind getting her to like you. What's up, guys? Today, we're tackling a hot topic in the dating world, ignoring to build attraction. You've probably heard this advice thrown around, 
but what does it actually mean? Is it just playing hard to get, or is there more to it? In this video, we'll dive into the psychology behind this strategy and explore how to use it effectively without coming across as a total jerk. Get ready to take some notes because we're about to unravel the mysteries of strategic ignoring. But just before we get started, if you feel like you could use a little expert advice in your dating life, there's a link in the description or pinned comment to book a free 60-minute strategy call with one of our coaches. Now, let's get into it. 1. Understanding the psychology of scarcity. First things first, let's talk about the concept of scarcity. It's a basic economic principle that says the less available something is, the more valuable it becomes. And believe it or not, this applies to dating too. If you're always available, always texting back immediately, always down to hang out, you start to seem a little too easy. On the other hand, when you're a bit harder to pin down, it creates an air of mystery and intrigue. She starts to wonder what you're up to, why you're not jumping at every chance to talk to her, and that wondering, that's where the attraction starts to build. Now, I'm not saying you should ignore her completely or play games, that's just manipulative and immature. But by being a bit more selective with your time and attention, you show that you have a life outside of your romantic pursuits. You're not just sitting around waiting for her to call. So the next time you're tempted to drop everything and respond to her text right away, take a beat, remember the power of scarcity, and let her sit with that anticipation for a bit. Trust me, it'll pay off in the long run. 2. The art of being unpredictable. Alright, so you've mastered the scarcity mindset, but how do you keep her on her toes without going overboard? That's where the art of unpredictability comes in. See, when you're first getting to know someone, it's easy to fall into a routine. You text at the same times, you make plans on the same days, you have the same conversations. And while that consistency can be comforting, it can also get a little boring. That's why it's important to mix things up every once in a while. Maybe you usually take a day to respond to her messages, but then one day you reply right away with a funny meme. Or maybe you typically stick to weekend dates, but then you surprise her with tickets to a random weeknight concert. The key is to keep her guessing, but in a good way. You don't want to be so unpredictable that she feels like she can't count on you at all. It's about finding that sweet spot where she knows you're interested, but she's never quite sure what you'll do next. And the best part? This doesn't just build attraction, it also keeps things fresh and exciting for you. When you're not stuck in a dating rut, you're more likely to stay engaged and invested in the relationship. So don't be afraid to shake things up every now and then. A little unpredictability goes a long way in keeping that spark alive. 3. Selective Responsiveness Now, let's talk about everyone's favorite topic, texting. In the age of constant communication, it can be tough to know when and how much to respond to someone you're interested in. But fear not, my friends, selective responsiveness is here to save the day. The basic idea is this, you don't have to answer every message right away, and you definitely don't have to match her level of chattiness. If she's blowing up your phone with paragraphs and you're more of a short and sweet kind of guy, that's okay. Stick to your style. The key is to be intentional with your responses. If she asks you a direct question, yeah, you should probably answer it. But if she's just sending random thoughts or memes, you can take your time crafting a reply. And if you're really busy with work or hobbies, or just need some alone time, it's totally fine to let her know that you'll get back to her later. In fact, it shows that you have boundaries and priorities outside of your dating life, which is super attractive. Just remember, selective responsiveness isn't about playing games or manipulating her emotions. It's about being true to yourself and communicating in a way that feels authentic to you. So don't stress too much about those read receipts. Just focus on being the best version of yourself, one text at a time. 4. Quality over quantity in interactions. Okay, so you've got the texting thing down, but what about when you're actually hanging out in person? That's where the idea of quality over quantity comes into play. See, a lot of guys think that the more time they spend with a girl, the more she'll like them. But in reality, it's not about how often you see each other, it's about how memorable and meaningful those interactions are. So instead of trying to cram in as many hangouts as possible, focus on making each one count. Put thought into your plans, whether it's a creative activity or a thoughtful gesture. Engage in deep, interesting conversations that go beyond surface-level small talk. Make her laugh, make her think, make her feel something. And don't be afraid to cut things short when the time is right. A well-timed, I had a great time, 
but I have to head out, is way more powerful than lingering around until things get awkward. Of course, this doesn't mean you should be flaky or inconsistent. If you make plans, stick to them. But when you are together, give her your full attention and effort. Show her that you value her time and company and that you're not just going through the motions. At the end of the day, it's the quality of your interactions that will leave a lasting impression, not the quantity. So make them count, boys. 5. Loving the tips we're sharing. If you're ready to dive even deeper, our free 60-minute strategy call offers a fantastic opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with an expert coach. This isn't just about meeting women, it's about understanding the dynamics of dating, enhancing your interpersonal skills, and building confidence that goes beyond just the dating scene. Reserve your spot today through the link in the pinned comment and start your journey towards successful and confident dating. 6. Letting her experience your abs. Alright, fellas, this next one might sound a little counterintuitive, but bear with me. Sometimes the best way to build attraction is to not be there. I know, I know, it goes against everything we've been taught about pursuing someone, but think about it this way. Have you ever had a really great time with someone and then found yourself missing them like crazy the next day? That's the power of absence. When you're constantly available and present, it's easy for someone to take you for granted. They get used to you always being there, always ready to drop everything for them. But when you give them a chance to experience your absence, that's when they start to realize just how much they enjoy your presence. Now, I'm not saying you should ghost her or play hard to get, but don't be afraid to have a life outside of your relationship. Spend time with friends, pursue your hobbies, focus on your career. Show her that while you enjoy her company, you don't need it to be happy and fulfilled. And when you do come back together after some time apart, that's when the sparks really start to fly. You have new stories to tell, new experiences to share. You appreciate each other's company that much more. So don't be afraid of a little distance every now and then. Trust that the attraction you've built can withstand a bit of time apart and enjoy the anticipation and excitement of coming back together even stronger than before. 7. Leaving conversations open-ended. You know that feeling when you're having a great conversation with someone and you just don't want it to end? That's the kind of energy we want to harness when it comes to ignoring to build attraction. See, a lot of guys make the mistake of trying to wrap up every interaction in a neat little bow. They say goodbye, they make plans for the next hangout, they tie up all the loose ends. But where's the fun in that? Instead, try leaving your conversations a bit open-ended. If you're texting, don't always be the one to send the last message. If you're hanging out in person, don't feel like you need to plan out the next date before you even say goodbye. Leave a little bit of mystery, a little bit of anticipation. Give her something to think about, something to look forward to. Maybe you're in the middle of a fascinating discussion about your favorite movies and you have to head out. Tell her you can't wait to hear her thoughts on the sequel next time you chat. Or maybe you're flirting back and forth and things are getting a little heated. Instead of pushing for a resolution, just let that tension linger. Trust me, it'll make your next interaction that much more electric. The key is to always leave her wanting more. Not in a manipulative way, but in a way that shows you're confident, intriguing, and worth pursuing. So embrace the power of the open-ended conversation and watch the attraction grow. 8. Creating healthy space. Finally, let's talk about the importance of creating healthy space in a relationship. And no, I'm not talking about the kind of space that involves ignoring her for days on end or playing mind games. I'm talking about the kind of space that allows both of you to maintain your individuality and independence even as you grow closer together. The kind of space that prevents you from becoming codependent or losing yourself in the relationship. See, a lot of guys think that the key to building attraction is to be available 24-7, to mold themselves into whatever their partner wants them to be. But in reality, that kind of behavior is a major turnoff. It shows a lack of confidence, a lack of self-respect. Instead, focus on cultivating your own interests, your own friendships, your own goals. Encourage her to do the same. Show her that while you love spending time with her, you also have a full and fulfilling life outside of your relationship. This doesn't mean you have to be distant or aloof, it just means setting healthy boundaries and expectations. It means being able to say, I'd love to hang out, but I have plans with friends tonight, without feeling guilty. It means supporting each other's growth and independence rather than trying to hold each other back. When you create this kind of healthy space, you actually strengthen your attraction to each other. 
You respect each other's autonomy, you admire each other's passions, you appreciate the time you do spend together that much more. So don't be afraid to take a step back every now and then. It might just be the key to moving your relationship forward. If you've made it this far, my love, comment below with the word 100% or something else to let me know, to confirm that you've received the knowledge from the video so far. For more interesting topics, subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video and share it later. Let's continue. 11 sexy questions to ask a woman, this will turn her on and increase sexual chemistry. What's up, guys? Ready to turn up the heat in your conversations? Today, we're diving into the art of asking questions that not only spark interest but also ignite a deeper sexual attraction. I'm going to share with you some sexy questions that can make a woman think about you in a whole new way. These aren't just any questions, they're carefully crafted to stir emotions and build tension. By the end of this video, you'll have the tools to engage her on a level that few men know how to reach. Are you ready to leave her eagerly anticipating your next words? But before we continue, if your love life could use some strategic advice, why not book a free 60-minute session with one of our experts? Find the link in the description or pinned comment. Now, let's dive in. Do you prefer to make the first move, or shall I? Alright, let's kick things off with a classic, the first move dilemma. Some girls love taking the reins, while others prefer a guy who's not afraid to take charge. Asking her straight up what she prefers not only shows you're confident enough to broach the subject, but it also gives you a road map for how to proceed. If she says she likes making the first move, you know you can sit back and let her work her magic. Flirt, banter, and build that tension, but let her be the one to lean in for the kiss or suggest taking things further. On the other hand, if she admits she's more into a guy taking the lead, that's your cue to step up to the plate. Start with small gestures, and gradually amp things up until the moment feels right to go in for the kiss. The key here is not to make assumptions based on stereotypes or past experiences, every girl is different, and by asking her directly, you show that you're interested in her specific preferences. Plus, it opens the door for a flirty conversation about turn-ons and dating dynamics, always a win in my book. What's your secret move to turn someone on? Next up, let's talk about signature seduction techniques. We've all got that one move that never fails to get the object of our affection hot and bothered. Asking her about hers not only gives you valuable intel, but it also opens up a playful, sexy dialogue that's sure to get you both in the mood. Maybe she's a master of the coy glance across the room, the kind that makes you feel like you're the only two people in the world. Or perhaps she's got a way of whispering in your ear that sends shivers down your spine. Whatever her secret weapon may be, showing genuine interest in it is sure to score you major points. And don't be afraid to share your own signature move in return. This is a great opportunity to show off your flirting skills and build some anticipation for future encounters. Just make sure to keep things classy and consensual. Do you like it slow or a bit more intense? Okay, time to turn up the heat a bit. Asking her about her preferred pace in the bedroom is a great way to gauge her sexual style and make sure you're on the same page when things start getting steamy. Some girls are all about the slow burn, the teasing, the anticipation, the gradual buildup. They want to savor every moment and make the payoff that much sweeter. If that's her vibe, take your time with foreplay, drawing out each touch and kiss until she's practically begging for more. On the flip side, some girls crave intensity and passion right from the start. They want to be swept off their feet, consumed by desire, and ravished with abandon. If that's more her speed, don't be afraid to amp up the urgency and let your hunger for her show. Of course, there's no right or wrong answer here, it's all about personal preference. The key is to listen to her response and adapt accordingly. And remember, just because she likes it one way sometimes doesn't mean that's her preference all the time. Variety is the spice of life, so be open to switching things up and trying new speeds and intensities as your relationship evolves. Have you ever had a naughty dream about someone you know? Now, let's dive into the world of fantasy for a bit. Asking her about any steamy dreams she's had about people in her real life is a playful way to get a glimpse into her subconscious desires and maybe even spark some new ones. The beauty of dreams is that they're a safe space to explore our deepest, most secret turn-ons without any real-world consequences. Maybe she's had a recurring dream about a co-worker bending her over the office desk, or a longtime friend suddenly sweeping her off her feet. Sharing these intimate details with you is a sign of trust and vulnerability, so make sure to receive them with an open mind and zero judgment. 
And who knows, maybe hearing about her naughty dreams will inspire some fantasies of your own. Don't be afraid to share them with her in return, as long as you keep things hypothetical and respectful. This kind of playful, imaginative banter is a great way to build sexual tension and keep things exciting, even if you're not quite ready to act on your desires in real life. What are your thoughts on public displays of affection? Next up, let's talk about PDA. Some couples are all about the hand-holding, the stolen kisses, the not-so-subtle groping in public places. Others prefer to keep things strictly behind closed doors. Asking for her take on public displays of affection is a great way to gauge her comfort level and make sure you're respecting her boundaries. If she's all for a little exhibitionism, that opens up a world of possibilities for flirting and foreplay outside the bedroom. You can steal kisses in the park, play footsie under the restaurant table, or even sneak off for a little something more. On the other hand, if she's more reserved about PDA, it's important to respect that and find other ways to show your affection. Maybe that means saving the makeout sessions for when you're alone but finding little ways to connect throughout the day. Ultimately, the key is to find a level of public affection that feels comfortable and authentic for both of you. It's not about putting on a show for others or adhering to some arbitrary standard of couple dom, it's about expressing your genuine connection in a way that feels good and right for you both. Do you find it more thrilling to chase or be chased? Ah, the age-old question, is it better to be the pursuer or the pursued? Some people get a rush from the thrill of the chase, the challenge of winning someone over and making them fall for you. Others prefer the exhilaration of being desired, of knowing that someone wants you so badly they'll do anything to have you. Asking your girl which side of the equation she falls on can give you valuable insight into her dating style and what gets her excited. If she's more of a chaser, that means you can play a little hard to get, teasing her with glimpses of your interest but making her work for your full attention. Create a sense of challenge and competition, and watch her rise to the occasion. If she prefers to be chased, on the other hand, that's your cue to step up your pursuit. Make her feel like the most desirable woman in the world, like you can't get enough of her and you'll stop at nothing to win her over. Shower her with compliments, surprise her with thoughtful gestures, and make it clear that you're not going anywhere until she's yours. Of course, as with all things in dating, balance is key. You don't want to come on too strong or play too hard to get, lest you risk turning her off entirely. Pay attention to her reactions and adjust your approach accordingly, always prioritizing respect and consent above all else. What's something you find incredibly sexy that you wish more people knew about? Now here's a question that's sure to reveal some fascinating insights into your girl's unique turn-ons. We all have those little quirks or preferences that drive us wild but that might not be obvious to the outside world. Asking her to share one of hers is a great way to show that you're interested in getting to know her on a deeper level and that you're open to exploring new ways to please her. Maybe she goes crazy for a guy who's passionate about his hobbies or who has a hidden talent for cooking or playing an instrument. Maybe she finds intelligence or a sharp wit to be the ultimate aphrodisiac, or she can't resist a man who's confident enough to rock a bold fashion choice. Whatever her answer may be, the key is to listen attentively and show genuine enthusiasm for her perspective. Ask follow-up questions, share your own thoughts and experiences, and look for ways to incorporate her turn-ons into your own behavior and interactions. And don't be afraid to get a little vulnerable in return. Sharing your own lesser-known turn-ons can be a great way to build intimacy and trust and to give her a roadmap for driving you wild in return. Just remember, the goal here isn't to change who you are to fit some mold of her perfect partner, it's about appreciating and celebrating each other's unique desires and finding ways to honor them in a way that feels authentic and meaningful to you both. What kind of touch sends shivers down your spine? Touch is such a powerful tool for building intimacy and stoking desire, but everyone's preferences are a little different. Some people crave a firm, confident touch, while others melt under the lightest, most teasing caress. Asking your girl what kind of touch really sets her nerve endings on fire is a great way to up your foreplay game and make sure you're hitting all the right buttons. Maybe she goes wild for a gentle nibble on her earlobe or a trail of kisses down the back of her neck. Maybe she craves the feeling of your hands running through her hair or your fingers tracing patterns on the inside of her thigh. As she shares her favorite touches, pay close attention not just to the specifics of the act but to the way she describes it. Does she use words like gentle, teasing, firm, or urgent? These clues can give you insight into the overall pace and intensity she craves and help you tailor your touch to her unique desires. And of course, don't be afraid to experiment and try new things. Just because she hasn't mentioned a particular type of touch doesn't mean she won't love it. 
As long as you're starting slow, paying attention to her reactions, and prioritizing her comfort and consent, there's no limit to the ways you can drive each other wild with just your hands and lips. What's the riskiest place you've ever felt the urge to kiss someone? Who doesn't love a little bit of danger? There's something about the thrill of getting caught that can make even the most innocent kiss feel electric. Asking your girl about the riskiest place she's ever wanted to lock lips is a great way to tap into that sense of excitement and adventure and maybe even inspire some daring exploits of your own. Maybe it was in a crowded elevator with strangers pressed in on all sides. Maybe it was in a quiet corner of a library or bookstore, surrounded by the musty scent of old pages. Or maybe it was somewhere truly public, like on a busy street corner or in the middle of a crowded party. As she shares her story, pay attention to the details that seem to excite her most. Is it the thrill of potentially getting caught or the naughtiness of doing something taboo? Is it the romance of stealing a secret moment in an unexpected place or the adrenaline rush of throwing caution to the wind? Use these clues to brainstorm your own risky kiss locations and see if you can make some of her fantasies come true. Within reason, of course. Just remember to always prioritize consent, safety, and respect for others. A sexy moment isn't worth jeopardizing your well-being or someone else's comfort. And who knows, maybe sharing your own risky kiss stories will spark some new fantasies and desires you never even knew you had. Is there a movie scene you find incredibly sexy? Sometimes the hottest moments happen on the big screen. Whether it's a classic Hollywood romance or a steamy indie flick, movies have a way of tapping into our deepest desires and sparking our imaginations in a way that real life sometimes can't. Asking your girl about her favorite sexy movie scene is a great way to get a glimpse into her cinematic turn-ons and maybe even inspire some roleplay or reenactment down the line. Maybe it's the iconic pottery scene from Ghost, with its sensual combination of artistry and intimacy. Maybe it's the playful, flirtatious banter of a classic screwball comedy or the smoldering intensity of a noir thriller. Or maybe it's something more explicit, like the boundary-pushing sex scenes of an arthouse film or the campy, over-the-top seduction of a trashy romance novel adaptation. Whatever her answer may be, use it as a jumping-off point for a deeper conversation about what exactly makes that scene so hot for her. Is it the chemistry between the actors, the build-up of tension and anticipation, or the raw physicality of the act itself? Does she imagine herself in the scene, or does she prefer to watch from a distance? As you explore her cinematic fantasies together, look for ways to bring a little movie magic into your own relationship. Maybe that means recreating a particularly steamy moment or borrowing some dialogue for your own flirtatious banter. Or maybe it just means cuddling up together for a hot and heavy movie marathon and seeing where the night takes you. What type of flirting makes you weak in the knees? Last but not least, let's talk about the art of flirtation. We all have our own style when it comes to charming and wooing a potential partner, but knowing what really works for your girl can help you take your game to the next level. Whether she's a sucker for cheesy pickup lines or a master of the subtle come-hither glance, understanding her flirting preferences can help you push all the right buttons and leave her weak in the knees. Maybe she loves a bold, direct approach with plenty of compliments and suggestive comments. Or maybe she prefers a more understated, intellectual kind of flirtation, with witty banter and playful teasing. Some girls go crazy for physical flirtation, like accidentally brushing up against you or finding excuses to touch your arm or shoulder. Others are all about the digital age, with sexy texts and suggestive snaps that build anticipation throughout the day. As she shares her flirting favorites, take mental notes and look for ways to incorporate them into your own repertoire. Challenge yourself to step outside your comfort zone and try a new approach, even if it feels a little silly or awkward at first. The more you practice, the more natural it will start to feel, and the more irresistible you'll become. And there you have it. So, what's next for you? Discover the truth about ignoring women to build attraction, or learn the signs she thinks you're a sexually attractive guy.